Welcome to the You Can Man podcast, episode 58. I'm Josh. I'm Tim. And I'm Dave. And on this week's episode, You Can Run, Man. All right, guys, welcome back to the You Can Man podcast, where we believe what one man can do, you can do as well. You know, with a little help from your friends and the proper know-how, this week, we're finally going to talk about running, because we've mentioned it so much throughout the podcast, and probably in the past, I don't know, six to seven weeks, something like that. Um, well, no, more than that. I guess we've been mentioning it for a while now, because we've both, we've all kind of been into yeah. it. Since, jo- we, since we kicked off the podcast, that's what I mean. at least a couple of us have been... Yeah, getting after we it. haven't talked about it since the beginning, really, but it's been more recently that we talked about it. So we decided, you know what, it's due time that we do an entire show on running. We're pretty much experts now, and, and so. I think it's going to be it's going to be more so like exercise, losing weight, that sort of thing. But yeah, well, an approach for just the average person. Right. Like we, there is no like professional runner sitting at this table, no, uh, or or nutritionist. But we have each found something to keep us going keep us you know uh hitting hitting the streets on the regular yeah so stay tuned we're gonna get all into that but first we had some current events happen today and luckily we're we're recording like two days before we're dropping episodes now hey but that's great so we can talk about current events so our governor in georgia just announced that he's going to be lifting a lot of the restrictions. So guys, what do you guys, what do you think about that? I'm a germaphobe, so I'm going to say too soon, Brian. I think it's a little too soon. Like we're not even at our peak. And I feel like, I mean, look, I'm still uh, thankfully employed, so it's easy for me to say stuff like this. I know a lot of people out there are hurting. And so um, there's obviously different perspectives, but it feels a little soon uh, from my perspective, just because we haven't hit our peak here in Georgia yet. Yeah, I almost have like too many thoughts to share and I don't, this is not a political podcast and I don't want people to, because I'm not going to turn it into a political podcast, but I don't want other people to like interpret what I'm saying a certain way. I I am, here's where I am. I'm somewhere in the middle of like complete shutdown. Government keeps everyone in their house versus everyone go out and do whatever they want. Now with a caveat, I mean, that's true personal liberty on that end so maybe i'm there i just honestly haven't hunted down the answer but i'm somewhere somewhere i think i'm i'm in the middle as well but i it sounds like from talking to you guys that i'm going out a decent amount more than you guys i think sounds like it i don't really have an issue with it i mean i'm keeping my distance and using hand sanitizer when i get back to the car that sort of thing i've done i've done restaurant pickup yeah, I've done a course. Home Depot order pickup. Not much more than that. I have not been Home Depot. Well, I was going to go the other day, weird. and then they didn't have uh, my mower, the belt, the mm. uh, the deck belt. They didn't. My local Home Depot didn't have it, so I'm going to have to go to a different one. Yeah, I haven't been inside a store in at least six weeks, and I keep calling Tim the wild card because I can't trust him because he's kind of going all over the place. And we are all back in the studio finally, so thank you guys for sticking with us. With That's that. breaking news. Yeah, with that really just not the best audio, and it was not what you guys are used to, and so I really appreciate you guys Yeah, but the, with the reality is... 70% of podcasts out there sound like what we did. Tim Tim's going hard on himself because right. we've always, you know, he prides himself on we, quality we audio. We like to think that we've got yeah. some decent audio. It's it's not the best. We might not be the best, but we sound like the best. And it's because of the curtains that we have hung up in Tim's basement <laughs> in yeah, I gotta, in HQ. I got to do some work on that because it soaks up the sound great, but it looks Oh, it looks really aw- bad. It looks awesome. You know, one thing about the sound stuff, just a nitpicky thing. And you guys listening, if you listen to a lot of podcasts, you're going to know exactly what I mean. When I edit a podcast and then I spit out that final image, I run it through a a um, loudness matching mm. thing. I have no idea what you're talking okay? about. That's clutch. So it is uh, matching it to industry standards. And so when you, let's say you're going in between two of our podcast episodes, 
the volume level should be pretty much exactly the same from episode to episode. Now, other podcasts that you'll listen to, they're all over the place. And so if you're, you know, if you're in your car, whatever, you keep the volume level, you know, you kind of notice like I'm on, I don't know, you know, what 26, you're on 26. And then the next podcast that you listen to is super loud yeah. or yeah. it's really, really soft. So having that um, loudness matching, it's like, is, it's big to me because it's super annoying to it's have like that happen. It's like when TV commercials used to be like insanely loud compared to the program. Yeah, yeah. It's really annoying. You're right. It's, it is annoying. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to see behind the curtain. So just make it happen. All right. That's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm making it happen for you, Dave. <laughs> Appreciate that. All right. Anything else you guys want to share? Dave was saying, I, I've got my Nashville early Bronco shirt on. Yeah, and na- Dave looks over and says, I don't like that shirt. Hold on. Pause. So I do like the shirt, but I just noticed something on it. So Nashville early Bronco, man, I need you to settle a bet here. I'm looking at this Bronco and it looks like it has a body lift, no suspension lift, which, which I have an issue with. All right. I need it to have a suspension lift so I can see the axle. It's basically scrubbing well, the ground, and I know it ain't cool. I'm pretty sure that John's Bronco has got the same setup as mine, and I would assume that he made this shirt based off his. So if I remember correctly, John's Bronco is a two-and-a-half-inch suspension lift and a one-inch body lift, okay. which is the perfect combo because that's what I have. <laughs> And I'm, it sits right. It, it, I'm yeah, it pretty sure right. that that's what his has. Uh, John, correct us if we're wrong. We'll and tag we, you, and hopefully you will listen to this. We'll do a follow up because the new Bronco. We we still got to oh, follow for up, sure. which they delayed. Yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah, for this. Yeah, they delayed. Oh, I uh, just read something that said they're going to go ahead and do it re- regardless. So I read no. I, well, I read a headline that Fake said news. they are they are delaying the the um the debut of the baby Bronco. Is what oh, I oh who cares about the baby Bronco. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, I just uh, literally within the past hour trimmed a bunch of trees. I saw you doing that and I was going to walk over there and take your photo without you Mm. seeing me, but I didn't do it. I was too quick. Yeah, I used the pole saw. There were some trees overhanging the swing set. Now that the pole saw? I do. I need to borrow that. It's awesome. Now that the the leaves are onto the trees, the the branches sag down and covering the uh, yeah, swing set yep. and I installed a new toilet seat in the hall bath. Look at you. Like, right. Do you guys get in those phases of there's like 32 things that each take 12 minutes, but you just don't do anything. But then one day you're just like on a rampage and no. you just start hammering through all those. Yep. That was me today. Yeah. It's a good sometimes. thing to do. <laughs> All right. Well, is that uh that about that about it? That's, ex- that's exciting. I cleaned my gutters out the other day, so that was exciting. Nice. Good for I you. really do not like getting on that roof. Yeah. Oh my goodness! You're just, I mean, you're spinning that roulette wheel every yeah. time you do it. Okay. When I have my roof redone, guys, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have some massive eye bolts wow. put in along the ridge vents. You're going to put in some fall okay? safety equipment? Fall and arrest. that way I can hook in some and I'm going to get me a harness. And then when I'm on that roof, I can hook into it like a rappelling thing. I'm, ser- I'm serious. That's beyond old man. I don't <laughs> I even know what to serious call that. Because I don't like that. Your, your roof, it's not that tall. I mean, it I is, know. It is on, on the, this on the low is. side. Yeah. It, is, it is tall. Uh, but you can look. You can fall ten feet. You'll be all right, dude. I, I don't want to do that. It's it's getting on the roof and off the roof I agree. on the ladder. It's getting that, it's getting off the roof onto the ladder. That's when it gets a little bit sketchy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get into this topic. You can run, man. Now, let's just take a trip down memory lane. <laughs> Say about a year and a half ago, we were all out of shape. Fat. I was embarrassed. With two myself. two years for me, but I'll, I'll okay, make it equivalent. Okay, Josh, in my mind. two years. Well, actually, for me, gosh, I'm going to say seven and a half months ago. Okay, I was forty two pounds heavier. That's year. insane. When I look back at pictures of you, first of all, you look like you're in high school right now. It blows <laughs> my mind every time I see you. Uh, but I look back at pictures and I'm like, I cannot believe. The transformation, like it's crazy. I look back at pictures of myself now, and I'm just like, "You texted." I us. was big. Yeah, you texted us. You're like, "Why didn't you guys say anything to me?" <laughs> I know. Well, it's because like, well, we, we didn't, you know, all we, we all put on four pounds a year dad for the past fifteen years. We I all mean, had that's the dad literally what I happens. guess it was just a gradual. No, yeah, it yeah, no, it, it happens very for slowly. Every, it's, it is for everybody, and then everyone in your peer group is basically doing the same thing, unless you hang out with super fit people. 
like everyone's putting on three to five pounds a year and it just happens. And yeah, 15 years later, you weigh your 40 pounds overweight plus. Uh, so yeah, two years ago, I was coming in at like 248 and this week I'm at like 208. So like right at 40 pounds. Look, I've, 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 I've been world-class my whole life. Okay. And so I only got up to like maybe 210, but look, I looked at pictures and I knew I had eight cups, but I look back at pictures and I'm like, man, that's embarrassing. It's not cool. Yeah, Dave's Dave's always a, a a tall, lean dude, but yeah, you can see it like in your face. Yeah, my face, bit. my neck, my now cheeks, look, my gut. I'm I uh, I was texting a friend earlier today, and I said that my 39 year old I'm going to use some language could kick my 19 year olds <laughs> booty booty, and I that's legit because I've never been even in this good a shape. Now, I'm not I'm not 39 yet. I'm almost 39. I'll be 39 in July. But I, I mean, you talk about high school, man, I was I was uh, what is that term? Uh, skinny fat? Yeah, skinny or, fat. Yeah, <laughs> I totally was yeah. like it was just like no, no muscle mass, really. Yeah, you know, yeah. I might have weighed about the same that I it's do not, now. It's not really fair unless you play like football in high school, because now you got a little bit of old man strength. And so you could just waste your 18 year old self. But I know what <laughs> you're saying. True. And I agree that you could smoke uh, baby Tim. Yeah, I mean, the sh should we go ahead and start getting into some numbers? Well, what's what the do we have a collective, well, like I mean, cumulative? Yeah, let's add up how much we've I'm lost. At, I'm right at 40. I'm at 40, over 42 pounds. So I was at like 25, but I've gained about five pounds of lean muscle. So call, oh. it, tw call it 20 pounds. All right, so we're we're coming in at 80 pounds plus. Some serious lost weight. Lost around the table. Yeah. So well, yeah. no, you said no. Um, we're more than that. You said forty. Oh, 40, I said 40, forty, and twenty. A yeah, okay. we're at like a hundred oh, pounds. I've got guys. I'm really good at math. You are. Um, <laughs> so yeah, over a hundred pounds. So, and yeah. we need to uh, we need to redo our podcast cover we photo. We do because we were all pretty chunky then. And so Speak we, for yourself. We need, to, we need to redo that. Well, and I've clean shaven too. Yeah. So that's a whole nother. Yeah, we just, all had full yeah, we all beards knocked going. It down. Uh, Josh has just straight up redneck handlebar mustache going. Yeah, down, he really does. Which is awesome. I no, respect I, it. I just went, you know, I was like, big changes in my life. I'm shaving this thing off because I literally, I don't think I had clean shaven since like 2006. I tried it. Yeah, it looks good on you. I tried it and I immediately was just like, no, yeah, I'm not, not doing quite this. Ready no, I can't to do it. Well, when I would trim it down like really short when I was big, I was like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you got to hide what's underneath. Yes. I, I don't, yes. I don't, well, the beard, yeah, the beard is the greatest thing, the greatest invention for the overweight male. Right. Like you can just hide that extra chin under there and you can kind of shape the beard to kind of make your head look a little slimmer. The UK man army knows what we're talking about. Yeah. So let's, I mean, let's talk about like the why that we've kind of done this and, you know, it's different for all of us. Um, but you know, and we're using terms like big, but that's relative, you know, everyone starts somewhere. Um, I was on a course, I'll just go first. Uh, you know, my, um, I played baseball in high school, did like marching band, uh, in the falls, nerd baseball in the spring, uh, all the way through high school, was fairly athletic in college. And then just kind of turned it off, like d stopped being active, started, you know, living by myself, eating whatever I would like. And yeah, over the next 15 to 20 years, just slowly added. I can, weight. I can remember visiting your college I guess it was like apartment. your apartment and just the crap that you would eat. Oh, I, I, was I mean, my favorite meal. I mean, so Friday night, like special occasion, <laughs> I, I could I would get a Pizzone from Pizza Hut, which they've brought back and I haven't tried yet. But <laughs> the Pizzone from Pizza Hut and then literally a half a gallon of Briar's mint chocolate chip Whoa, ice cream. Like, you would like get a whole was, half gallon? Yeah, like it was nothing. Like it was nothing. I'd have my my dinner one night would be a whole cr uh, Velveeta shells and cheese. Like a whole wow. meal Dang. of just Velveeta shells and cheese. So I was just off da the rails. Dave's over there saying, off dang. The and he would like down a whole freaking thing of Oreos. <laughs> Did you not? No, not in one sitting. <laughs> a whole sleeve or something, so, right? No, no, no. So I would, I eat when I, in college, I'd work at, I worked at Publix and I'd grab, I'd grab like the mint Oreos, right? I'd get a whole pack of them and I'd eat half of it that night. I'd wake up the next morning, I'd eat the other half. And I'd be like, there's an entire package of Oreos inside my body, <laughs> like in my stomach. 
<laughs> yeah. So let's bring it back to me. So after all this time, as I've, you know, expanded in the waistline, I had like a little, I don't know, I don't, I don't think I've talked about it on the podcast. I'm not going to go super into depth, in depth with it, but a little over two years ago, I had like a health scare, woke up in the middle of the night, couldn't breathe, chest pain, like felt like someone was standing on my chest, felt sick, nauseated, tried to like go back to sleep and sleep it off and just couldn't shake the feeling. So drove myself to the ER. They did EKGs. They saw something weird on my EKG. Had two stress tests at the hospital while I was there. They put me on a treadmill. They put me on a recumbent bike and ultrasounded my heart while I was doing all this stuff. Still saw some weird stuff on the EKG, but nothing they could identify. So apparently on an EKG, there's certain indicators that a, that a cardiologist can go, oh, that means that and that's bad. What she was seeing on mine was like this little tiny anomaly that she couldn't identify. She's like, it's not perfectly normal, but it's nothing that I'm going to be concerned about. So bottom line is my primary care physician chalked it up to like stress. And yep. both my parents had had heart attacks within the previous two years under 60 years old, which is like the number one indicator that you're susceptible to heart attacks. And just kind of having that knowledge and knowing how badly I was treating my body all combined for just some stress, like in the middle of the night that just woke me up. And from basically that point on, you can go one of two ways, you know, you can feel sorry for yourself and spiral and not or not care. Uh, and I s decided I'm going to do something and I'm not going to do what I've done every time, which is go crazy, like crazy on the exercise, crazy on the diet, unsustainable. I'm just going to do little pieces at a time. And that's where I started. And so, yeah, I've been at it two solid years. I mean, which I think is a habit. Yeah, I ran 18 miles. That Saturday. is insane. Dang. That was the furthest, furthest I've run in my life. That and is that's insane. that's a long way, no matter who you are. But I mean, I do remember two years ago, and I mean, this sounds cliche, and we're not like we're not self help people here, but you can, man. Like I, I remember running the first mile, like the next day or the next day, two days after being in the hospital, and just being gassed and being embarrassed and saying, you know, I used to do, I used to be an athlete, you know, I used to be able to do this stuff. Um, and now, yeah, I rattle off 18 and yeah, that's insane. Okay. Yeah. We should talk about our first mile because when I got back into, I was just like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to do this. And then I just like an idiot, <laughs> just, I was like, screw this. I'm going out. Wait, you just, just went full it. bore. That doesn't yes. sound anything like you. <laughs> uh -huh. And I went 1.67 miles and I completely trashed my feet. Like I, I could not walk right. The next day you had like four gump legs kind of thing? something was up. And I guess, it, you know, it was a lot to do with the shoes, Foot, but also you had special going, shoes. you know, I don't even know how many years it had been because I, I ran like sort of maybe. Oh, gosh, I don't even know how long ago that was maybe like 12, 13 years ago, but I never really was serious about it. But I literally had not run a mile over a mile in a very long time. And then I did it with shoes that were not made for that. And then just went out there and did it. And yeah, I'd completely trashed my feet. And then it was probably another like two something months. And then I won't get into like what really propelled me into getting after it really hard um, with the running and, and working out and everything, but just major life changes. And yeah, I went from zero to working out six days a week. So what I did was I was running. Um, let's see, what is my schedule? Monday, Wednesday, Friday is running or hiking. And Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is lifting weights. And so that's literally what I've done for the past seven and a half months. If someone had told me, you know, a year ago or two years ago that I was going to be sitting here listening to Tim Harmon say that he lifts weights three days a week, <laughs> there, there's no way that I would have believed that. And it's a, it's a compliment. And it's also a statement to people out there who, if they feel like they're, you know, there's a, there's this inertia built up when you're doing a lot of stuff, there's inertia built up. And when you're not doing stuff, mm -hmm. there's inertia built up and it's hard to stop or start. And if you're out there and you feel like you can't do it, Tim Harmon is your, should be your beacon of light and your North star. Yeah. And just somebody who who I never thought would be like, I'm going to work out. No, because I was, I was kind of anti that. Right. It was like, 
heck no, I'm not going to do that. Because I would always, I almost just, just like a complete idiot, I would pride myself in, well, you know, I'm just, I've kind of maintained this for <laughs> 15 years. So you, I think I'm okay. See this physique? <laughs> I'm good. Seriously. Yeah, no, yeah. I would like, because I kind of maintained about the same weight for a pretty decent amount of time. It hit your equilibrium. Yeah. And yeah. so I thought, okay, I'm not going crazy here and I'm not gaining a ton of weight. And so if I just kind of keep, keep it where it's at, then I kind of felt like I was Well, we like, were all in that similar place of like, we could feel the large t-shirt getting real tight, you know, and uh, I, then I graduated to XLs. And then those started to get a little tight, but you would tell people how much you weigh and they'd be like, oh man, you, you wear it well. You do not look like you weigh that much. And so in your mind, you're like, oh, I'm still good. I still got it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, jump into me. Uh, I think my, my story is kind of similar to Josh's in that the reason that I started getting out there and working out and running a lot more was because I, I think I, I have a pretty stressful job and I'm also, I heap a bunch of stress on myself. It's just kind of my personality. Yeah, you do. And uh, thanks a lot. And I'm still working on it. But uh, I didn't have like a night episode, but I started having these things where I'm like, man, I think these are panic attacks. And I talked to my doctor. He's like, yes, yeah, panic attack. I was like, OK, I'm not going to be that guy who has panic attacks. And so and I actually heard one of our competitors, Joe Rogan. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, yeah. uh, but he he likens the body to like a, to a battery. And if you don't use that battery, like that acid inside, it starts to overflow and so he said, that's kind of like the body. You have this energy inside you. If you don't get that energy out, like it's just going to bubble up to the surface and come out in negative ways, which really resonated with me because that's what was happening to me. And you had all those donuts that you were eating that was really fueling. So I ate, I ate three donuts a day, I don't know, three to four days a week. We're talking for, Dunkin' Donuts. That Dunkin is donuts. insane. Yeah. So we, we know this about Dave, but <laughs> none of our listeners know this. This joker would literally at what every day, every on, day. Your, on your way to work? Not every day, but pretty I mean three four days. Out of three, five. four, four, <laughs> three or week. four days a week. You you roll up through roll that up. Dunkin' Donuts drive through thousand calories uh before I'm at work. Three <laughs> three donuts. Don't yeah. you would you get coffee? Like, like it was nothing. I'd get like a like an iced coffee, yep, medium iced coffee. With cream and sugar, I yep, cream no sugar. less. Yep. Okay. So you had a lot of sugar just in the coffee alone. I, I, it's which hard is like th the worst thing you can do in the morning. It's to hard your body. to think about now. How do you not have the diabetes? <laughs> that everybody says that it's weird. Like I'm sure that I'll pay for it eventually. <laughs> I hope that doesn't happen, but I'm sure I'll pay for it because like, and I always say this, that food doesn't affect me positively or negatively. Like nothing I can I can drink a pot of coffee and then 20 minutes later go to sleep like nothing. It just doesn't make it doesn't make me feel good or bad. And so those three donuts a day, I just felt normal. Now, I, I don't know what that is, but um, anyway, so. <laughs> well, we trick, what, our, what, we what trick today, ourselves. What would happen today if you went and did that? Nothing. That, really? Well, okay. It, it you think so? Because, yeah, because I would feel like garbage. Because every once in a while, that. you know, I'll go back and I'll, I'll go back to my old ways. <laughs> go back you know, to roots. Every few weeks I'll, I'll stop by. <laughs> and yeah, it's just like, okay, well, this Say is. Say hi right. to your friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah the guy's <laughs> like, dude, where you been, man? <laughs> they, they've literally said that to me. I didn't even have to. Well, I got to the point where I didn't have to order. They would just be like, pull around, you know, and like. So, yeah, it's embarrassing. But anyway, uh, so, yeah, I was real stressed out. And actually, Josh's uh, brother, Jacob, was uh, said, hey, I want to run a race a month. This was last year in 2019. Uh, well, I guess it was December 2018. He said, I want to run a race a month. And Josh was like, yeah, let's do it. And Josh asked me about it. I was like, yeah, cool. So we did it. I missed one, but I made it up uh, at the end of the year. And uh, and that was kind of, you know, I guess what kept me going. So what I would say to people out there, maybe we're going to get into this, is uh, you need a support system. You don't need to start too too fast or too strong. Yeah, just baby steps, like, you know, incremental changes. I, I kind yeah. of put it in my mind where I was like, you know, today, I'm not going to get down on myself, but today is the slowest I'm going to be. So mm. tomorrow, like the next day, incremental improvements was kind of the way that I attacked I, it. I was going to say one thing that helped me. Um, I went and paid some good money for some good shoes. You got Like to. I went and got fitted and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And for me to spend that kind of money on shoes that's that's big time. Like I, I don't know that I've ever spent over a hundred dollars on a pair of shoes. I mean, eh, eh, maybe I, highly doubtful. That's still a big spend for me. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> if you're gonna but, run multiple times a week, though, you yes. have to have quality footwear, yep. and you have to fa you have to find out. I mean, you can spend one hundred and fifty dollars on shoes. 
and they're gonna they could feel terrible to you. You just have to find the right shoes. Right. For you. So I maybe we could kind of start there because that, that is part of it, um, especially for me because I had trashed my feet before, and so I was like, I got to get good shoes. So I went to a local running place, Peachtree Running store is that, was, was big that what peach running big, company big peach running company so if you're in the atlanta area definitely go there so they will fit you with shoes and they'll watch your gate when you they run. will actually take a ipad or something they'll say okay run out here on the sidewalk and then you know they'll see how you run and then they'll let you try on you know different shoes and all that stuff and so i finally landed on okay these feel good and that's what i ended up with um but every, everybody's foot's obviously different so that was a big spend. And so I was kind of like, I got to do this now because I just spent some money on this <laughs> and I, it's going to make me feel horrible if I'm wasting this money and not using these shoes. And so I started that that day. I think I started that day. I thought I got the shoes, if not the next, very next day. Yeah. Yeah. Shoes are important. I did, I did the same thing. Um, I did all my research online and I'd been buying my own shoes, but once I started getting up in the miles, just over three miles, um, which today for me, like that's a warm up. And when I started, that was an insane distance. And my feet really started feeling the effects of it. And so I went to an expert and we talked about my feet. He watched me run, picked out a shoe that I would not have picked out on my own with my own research. And it felt, I keep, I tell everyone this, it felt like I was Cinderella, like putting a glass slipper on. Like oh, it that's just, precious. it was, I didn't know a shoe could feel that good on my foot. Like wow. it just felt like it was made for my foot, which is awesome. Uh, so yeah, spend the money. And my other, you know, I guess we'll just go around for a couple tips to yeah. this. Cause we're talking about the average person going from nothing just regular, to regular let's, dudes. let's get moving right. three and, times and, a week or whatever. And just so you guys know, this, this podcast isn't going to be like some step-by-step kind of thing. No. Um, we'll, we might get in. I think Josh has more methodology as far as um, how much you should increase week to yeah. week. And uh, you might get into that a little bit. But really, it's uh, what we really wanted to do is to utilize this podcast episode as encouragement. Just like with all of our other topics. It, exactly. So what one man can do, you can do as well with a little help from your friends and a little encouragement from your friends. And that's what we're here doing. So Josh. Yeah. Go, so go w- one one thing that was huge for me, uh, and I think I've, men- I've mentioned this on another podcast, maybe a different topic, but especially those of you, and there, there's a lot of our Facebook group is blowing up and there's so many super smart dudes and women. I was going to say chicks, but I would get in trouble for that. Come on, man. Um, so men and women on there that are super smart doing all kinds of projects, but there's probably a lot of perfectionists in the mix. I get the feeling and I'm one as well. And I'm the, the type that if things go sideways on me, I want to shut down. Like that's the first step. And so I, you know, previously, with any exercise goals or diet goals or anything like that, I would set these insane bars. And then the first day that I didn't meet that, that goal, I would just, it would be off the rails. I'd say, well, it's not worth doing. Like I'm done now. I've screwed it up. And I read this book called finish by John Acuff, which you should read. The biggest takeaway from that book for me that applied directly to exercise was whatever goal you have, whatever it is, if it's to run a hundred miles in a year, okay, that's not a massive goal, but a hundred miles in a year, cut it in half. Like whatever your goal is, just cut it in half. And that way you may hit your goal halfway through the year. And now you've got a big win. You got a big W under your belt and that'll motivate you to do another 50 mile goal or maybe a, a 75 mile goal for the rest of the year. So take your goal and it, just cut it in half, just right off the bat. And don't don't play games with it. Don't don't, you know, make try to size it to something you think you can do. Just whatever your goal is out there, cut it in half or cut the timeline in half. That's a way to get some small wins to propel you on to the bigger mission. And that's what I've done. I mean, I I didn't even I didn't have mileage goals. I just said I need to be running three times a week. And that's where I started. Right. I let's, need to run three times a week. Let's talk. Uh, also quickly about prioritizing prioritizing this because if you're not taking into consideration i'm going to give up this amount of time to do this then you're quickly just going to fall off so m- meaning you've got a routine down you, you're used to doing the same things 
right? So you have to start thinking about the time that you've been spending sitting on the couch watching Netflix or whatever and reorient your day. It's so weird me saying this because like <laughs> that's another thing I just bucked against was just time management and all kinds of stuff like that. But it's a commitment because you've got to think that through because if you don't make the time to do it and you don't, you, you're going to have to cut something else out is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. You can't just, I mean, I guess you could just get up an hour earlier. So there is That's that. That's the number one solution. Yeah, there is that. <laughs> and I, I have done that. I crazy just would get up. So I, I've talked about being at the mountains. There's a local uh, national battlefield park, Kennesaw Mountain. And so, so many times I'd be up there at like 630 in the morning. And that was a huge thing for me. So i am already got my workout done and the day has not even really started. So that's something to consider as well. However, you know, you've got to reorient when you go to bed. Yeah, making making it a priority, definitely important. I remember one turning point for me was I, I had just started. I was, I was maybe a month or two in and I went, I think, Dave, it's when we went to go see Jordan Peterson. Jordan yep. Peterson, the clinical psychologist, came into town and it was on whatever day I was supposed to run. And I hadn't run that day. And that event was at night. And we went to like Ted's Montana Grill and had a huge dinner, had a couple drinks at the event. And then, you know, it was like 11 o'clock by the time we came home. And I, I looked at the calendar and I'm like, I was supposed to run today. And I went out you at gotta, 11 p.m. with my headlamp and ran my two miles or whatever it was at the time. And I just remember thinking like in my mind while I'm running, how crazy it was that it was dark and I had a headlamp on, but I was like, I have made a decision that I am going to do. Yeah. This. You got to pay the man. So and, yeah. yeah. And I mean, then you threw up. No, I felt, <laughs> I felt good. And I think, yeah, most of it was just that emotional high. Like I've made this decision and I'm, I'm going to make it happen tonight and I've, nothing's going to, no, nothing else is going to stop me. I've heard people say that they'll kind of schedule their week out and then they, um, you know, they schedule their week out. This is what I'm going to do. These are the workouts I'm going to get. And then they owe that to themselves. Like I, they owe those workouts to themselves for that week. For me, it's more of, um, you know, I, I've always kind of sort of really in my previous life was kind of a runner and then, you know, didn't do much for a bunch of years. Uh, but like, hey, look, I always got the peach tree in me once. Once <laughs> a year, too. I can run 6.2 miles. Uh, there were a few years there where it was brutal. The follow, like the next two days, I literally couldn't walk upstairs. It was embarrassing. <laughs> embarrassing. But uh, yeah, once I started uh, becoming more active, it was really just setting goals that I knew that I could, or really wanting to be consistent. So whether I was running every day or every other day, usually three times a week, I just wanted to be able to do something that I knew that I could keep up for over a long period of time. Cause I got it in my mind. I was like, look, you're not going to see the results you want to see for a year. That's just the way that it is. Yes. And I, I'm doing this to make myself feel better, to make myself operate uh, better, to be a better worker, to be a better parent, a better husband. And I'm just going to do these things and I'm going to see the results three, six, 12 months down the road. And that's just kind of how it played out for me. So for me, it was really just making a change that I knew I could implement in my lifestyle going forward. Yeah, I like your point about the age thing and the, you know, you're not going to go out and we're not setting any records here. No. Like this is a lifestyle change that's to benefit you. Um and I'm sure people that are older than us could could even give us advice at this point in our lives as far as this exercise thing goes, but yeah, when I started running and I was like 36, 37 years old, I I just realized, hey, like you're not 25, you're you're not going to go you're not going to be running a 10k next month. Like that's right. not going to happen. That's get, that's that's going to be almost 2 or 3 months down the road a year. You're going to see res you need to have the year long view of to what your results want to be. But for those of you who are younger, you've got I mean, <laughs> you've got time, you got the energy, you know, get out there and do it. But, you know, a lot of our listeners I know are kind of in our age bracket here and yeah, don't try to set the world on fire. Just do the yeah, incremental steps. Don't do what I did because I stupidly would just up my mileage like crazy. I remember one morning I went up and down that mountain and then I ran like six or seven miles. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'd never done that in my life, <laughs> let alone hike up and down a mountain and then do it. I don't know what I was thinking. And my knee was 
crazy hurting towards the end of that. And I just like, you know what? I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And I paid for it. Can't do that at our I age. I totally trashed my knees. That's actually when I think I, I started more exclusively hiking. And so I, I will say if you get into running and you do have some knee issues, try hiking for a little while because I think that that really helped me with cardiovascular stuff because it was much more high intensity for, I don't know, a shorter amount of time or we, something. Yeah. You got to build up that base. I mean, if you haven't ever done it, um, you need to get some miles into your feet, some miles into your lungs and get your body used to moving. Yeah, like it, that. it allowed my cardiovascular to catch up with my legs yeah i mean it's i don't know the analogy to use but dave just said put miles on your body like i'll go into that a little bit as far as increasing miles because some people might you might go out there and maybe you run two miles and you you haven't run in a 10 years let's say but you run 10 miles and you feel great don't go out two days later and try to run four miles like don't do that you you need to set a small base of basically the same distances during the week, and again, I'm not an expert. I'm saying like the most base level running program, you know, within a week, maybe do two miles one day, three miles, two days later, maybe two miles again, two days later. Yeah, And, and then the next week, don't increase your total weekly mileage by more than 10%. I think that you, you've uh, pointed us to some sort of plan before that's online that you maybe looked at. Uh, yeah, I don't have one specifically. I've used a bunch of different ones. Yeah, let's but. let's look one of those up and then we'll post that in our show notes because, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of different ones, but yeah. we'll, we'll but try the, to... The, the overriding rule, though, and this is pretty much universal across all runners, is that 10% rule. Don't increase... Total weekly mileage more than ten percent week over week. Yeah, That's I, see, where I haven't, I haven't done up. that. I'm all over the place. It's like yeah, you've cycled a few times where you I like really ramp have. it up too fast and then have and then injure yourself. Yeah, two weeks ago come. I was doing five uh, k three times a week, and then I dialed it down. And I just did like two and a half miles each of those days, and then now this week starting out it's Monday. I just ran five miles, and I've just crazy increased my pace and I'm trying to figure out how in the world I did it but I went literally from like 10 minutes to 10 10 minutes 30 seconds all the way down <laughs> to like 8 15 you, yeah, you, you, so, you, you ran yeah. five miles a eight eight fourteen average I was like dang Tim I don't know where that came I, from look it's something okay well, I, here look here's my I'm not saying you're not fast Tim my rule, it's a rule in the runner. Now that I'm a runner yeah, in the running community, expert. Strava, or it didn't happen, is, is the rule. Now, that means you need a GPS watch that logs look, to Strava because self I didn't service, trust my Nike app on my service. previous run the other week. And so I got in my car and I, I did the mileage and it came out right at it. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to verify this on Google Maps as well. Just Did you stop watch your run? What do you mean? I mean, I hit That's the all button. The time. I look, we'll, we're, what we're going <laughs> to do. I hit the button. We're going to run, we're gonna run the yeah. numbers. Josh and I are going to take you out. We're going to put you through your paces and we're going to see how the numbers shake Okay. Out. <laughs> I'm going to trash you guys. Right? <laughs> well, I think something that keeps coming won't. up, something that keeps coming up, you would, well, no, I'm not going to say you would, but uh, something that keeps coming up is I think we would all agree if you're starting a new activity, don't get down on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Everybody starts somewhere. And um, I mean, if you if you want to run and you go out there and you can't even run, you can't run a quarter mile, that's OK. Like you got to start somewhere and just incrementally improve that. And then in six months, all of a sudden you're a runner, like you're at a point where you didn't think you could ever be. So it's making those incremental improvements. Yeah. I think. And we're talking running today. This can be any physical activity for you. This could be exercise bike in your garage. Yeah. This could be treadmill work. This could be walking your neighborhood, walking your Lifting dog, weights. riding bikes, pumping iron, See, whatever. I, I want to get you guys. I, I think Josh, especially if you started lifting weights, you would get <laughs> jacked. Because yeah. you got you got the body type for I, it. Look, I can't handle that. Kind I don't of need pressure. him thinking he's better than me. Any <laughs> any better, more better. We than should me do right? another show on that. I'm definitely not. And, and well, the the coronavirus totally messed me oh, up with yeah. that because I was going the to gyms. the gym. Dude, you got. Yeah. I bought that squat rack from my garage. You got to do that. Yeah, Best except you yourself. won't. You won't let me come no, over. You come over. I'll sanitize it. <laughs> <laughs> Wipe it down. Yeah. Yeah, I've still been doing stuff, but I I bought a pull up bar and stuff uh, that I installed in the nice. basement. And I bought these um, like push up 
like handle handle things things. yeah Yeah, and they like rotate and stuff i've been doing some push-ups (laughs) y'all nice i do do these like incline push-ups too yeah (laughs) it's crazy yeah i need to get some i need to get into more of the weight training or calisthenics just body weight stuff because i am full on some resistance just running mode right now yeah that's all i'm doing all right well we're gonna wrap it up here and we'll be back after the break josh i hope your segment's kind of short because uh we talked a good long ways about uh we're passionate yeah yeah about uh i'll make it brief i'll make it brief all right cool we'll be back after the break This episode is sponsored by 1776 United. 1776 United is a patriotic and historically inspired lifestyle brand. They make the best patriotic shirts and apparel on the market today. I personally own many of their products, and if you want to don patriotic gear without looking gaudy, check them out on Instagram, Facebook, and at 1776united.com. All right, guys, welcome back. Josh has the bonus segment for us. Josh, what you got? All right, I don't have a fancy name because I uh, just didn't think of one, but we're going to talk about paper. So, okay. Uh, yeah. And wrapping it up. Yep. Okay, so. we'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Riveting. No, so I have, uh, you know, everyone comes, you come across these questions like every day of why is this like that? Why, why, is, why is this thing the way that it, that it is? How did we get here? Well, for me, this thing is today. Why is this paper I'm holding? Why is it in the U.S. and Canada eight and a half inches wide by 11 inches tall? Okay. Why that dimension? It's so random. It's a random dimension. Eight and a, Why look, isn't it square? Look, we are, um, we're America. We do what we want. Uh, everyone's on metric. They can get their millimeters and whatever standard is standardized. Make it all. I kind of wish we were. We got it. We got to go metric. Yeah, uh, we won't. But, but it is a good point. We do what we want. We do what we want. So we're not metric. So we, why do we have this weird paper shape? And every printer, whatever, eight and a half by eleven. How did we get here? Well, you're gonna be. I had a hunch, but this is why. Do you have any guesses? First of all, why are we at a? Why are we at eight and a half by eleven? Uh, it's got to have something to do with the printer size. It's got to have something to do with that. I don't know. So printers now are standardized to feed this kind of paper. Oh yeah, no, I'm talking. Right? I'm talking like back in the like the press days. Okay. Yes. Yes. Any any. Did it have something to Dave? do? I was thinking like either the mail system or uh, like newspapers, something that had to do with that. Kind newspapers, printing press, similar ideas here. So the the best I could find this was multiple sources that kind of came back to this conclusion was that uh, in the 1600s uh, the Dutch invented what is called the two sheet mold. Not going to go into how paper is made, but this Thank is you. actually how like sh- sheets of paper in the 1600s were made they would have these screens that kind of like sift you would have a huge vat of warm or boiling water that had pulp in it and these screens these rectangular screens would get pushed down into the vat and then when they got pulled up the pulp would be laid out on the screen and then that pulp would be dried and peeled off and that would be like a rough sheet of paper right the average what they called vat man who the guy that manned the vat the average arm span was 44 and a half inches so that's how wide they would make this wood frame of the screen that they would dip and then when they cut it down evenly when they cut it down into eight pieces though that is eight eight and and a half half by 11. 11 it was 17 inches deep 44 okay, so we wide. can thank the vat man. Okay, so vat man. And what's crazy is, so that was just a standard, right? The Dutch 1600s printing press. That was a standard sheet of paper forever, and it made its way over to the U.S. And what's weird is in 1921, the government was like, hey, we need to like officially make sheets of paper official because printing presses had been around, but there were still... People doing hand whatever, hand paper making. It seems like people were saying that there was like a movement to keep those people in business as well. So eight and a half by 11 was stuck with. But the government decided that eight by ten and a half was going to be the government standard 
for sheet of paper size. So one inch shorter. So you may have seen older legal documents about that time, eight and a half by 10 and or sorry, eight by 10 and a half inches. It took all the way until Ronald Reagan's administration for them to make the government on eight and a half by 11. Because back in 21, they said the government would be eight by 10 and a half. The people would be eight and a half by 11. So before like 1980 Ridiculous. or 81, they were all... There was two standards. Wow. There, and so, and what's weird though, is this eight and a half by 11, now we've built all our machinery around eight and a half by 11. And how crazy is that? Now all the printers are able to do all the other standard sizes right. too. Right. But anyway... A guy's arm length. Okay. Four, four inches. All right. Now you know. Now you know. I'm glad that we kind of got back to just the random bonus segments. Yes. Because they were kind of missing for a we while did. there. So, guys, I hope you learned something today. All right. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in to the UK Man podcast today. Like we mentioned earlier, our Facebook group has been blowing up. I think we've increased the number of members by about 50%. Yeah. Over the last, I don't know, two weeks or gosh, week and a half, yep. something like that. Tons of guys and gals now. So we've got a lot of gals on there that are posting stuff as well. Did you well, see that teak table set? Yes. Man, that thing was nice. Gail. Yeah. Yeah. She posted that. That was very, very nice. She bought it for like a hundred bucks on Facebook. I don't know. It was like she, she bought, bought a, a teak, like an outdoor Full table, like four Super or six nice. chairs. And just refinished the whole refinished thing. Refinished it. Nice. It looks like a million dollars. Yeah, actually, I, I, so I take back, uh, ladies, we do need you to post more. Because actually, now that I think about it, I think Gail was like, like the only one that really posted uh, much of anything of all of our newer ladies okay. that have joined the group. So this is You Can Man, but we welcome the ladies. You can, homo sapien. You can, ma'am. Yes, yes. <laughs> so check out the Facebook group. Hey, take some time to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts because that really does help us out and helps other people find our podcast. Yeah, so take all some you, time all to do you that. folks that have been listening for a while and have never left a review, let's get that review. Do it now. Do it now. All right. Catch you guys next time. Thank you.